Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. I am Joseph Samuel, the brother-in-law of Marcia Maria Samuel. On behalf of the family, welcome and thank you all here and online for the condolences, prayers, calls, and visits that have been comforted during this difficult time. We are gathered here to commemorate the life and death of our beloved Marcia Maria Samuel and her brother Thaddeus Spencer Prokop. Today's program will commence with a hymn followed by the eulogies from both sides of the families, Prokop and Samuel. The eulogies will be delivered with, from, by Bernadette Samuel, daughter of Marcia Maria Samuel, and Andel Crooker, son of the, the late Thaddeus Spencer Crooker. Following Brother Owen from the New Grand Pentecostal will deliver the message from the scriptures. We will, we will have a hymn following that product, the scriptures, after which we will open the floor for anyone who wants to speak, share someone to the group, and also for those online. Following that, we will have a closing prayer by Anne Rose, him after, and then I will have some closing remarks. So now I will invite to be controlled to be done by Venera.
know, I mean, this song always brings back memories for me. It's a hard feeling song for me personally. Uh, reminds me of when passing of my mom, which was over 15, 20 years ago. So every time I hear this song, I always reflect on that time and the good times as well. So now I'll invite Bernadette Samuel to do the first section, the first part of the eulogy, followed by Andel Krukov, who will complete the second half. to say the eulogy for my father's passing. But this time we do it a little different. And we decided that for children, each have a part to play. Each gets to say something. So I will start off. Love. Love comes in different forms. Two of the forms between a husband and a wife, between a mother and her child or children. I strongly believe my parents shared that old school classic kind of love. That being with your best friend, your soulmate, your person. The love that a mother has for her children can be shown in the simplest form. Coming to wake us up, having those moments of laughter, smiling, sharing stories. Break ups are hard, but losing a parent is hard, especially a mother. If it doesn't go away, you only learn to live with that hole in your heart. The conversations each of us had with mommy was special in its own way. I know that mommy in heaven, with the love of her life, looking down, smiling. I'm gonna to try to say it as quickly as possible. Each, everybody has some. Speaking from Moria's view, I admired, I admired my mom. She wasn't the best with features and pronouncing words, with figures, sorry, my mistake, and pronouncing words correctly. But the one thing she was perfect at was taking care of her family and our home. If I had to choose, she would be my role model. She showed me what it means to be a wife and a mother. She is the definition of being a perfect woman. I watched how she took care and cared and cared, catered to my dad, waking up 3 a.m. to make him breakfast and lunch, iron his cover out, etc. She kept the house clean. She washed, she washes everyone's clothes, she cooks food every day and bakes homemade bread on Sundays. She loves everything, art and craft related. The last thing we did together was make it do it yourself snowman with toilet paper rolls for Kaya's homework. Then after we realized we did all the work while Kaya was playing, 
but we did we didn't care because we enjoyed our bonding woman I will never forget no matter how big I am once I'm out late she would call to make sure I'm safe and she would stay up until I reached back home these are the things she did to show me how to be a good wife and mother. <laughs> Only now that I have my own little family, I now understand everything she used to do. But my favorite memory of her would be forever when I got pregnant. Anyone who was close to her could tell you how, how she was more happy than me. Every day she rubbed in my belly. She re renovated her room millions of times so she can keep the baby in her room. She even held my hand while I was in labor and waited outside the hospital till I gave birth. I wish everybody could have seen the look on her face when she came into the room and saw me holding her. Now I understand why parents does have does love asking their kids for grandkids. I'm glad I was able to give her that moment. I watched my mom went from walking around doing housework and playing with her grandkids to not being able to walk on her own before we took her to the hospital. Something told me to carry Sophie and Kaya to tell her goodbye. She used literally all her strength to smile and talk to them. She was alone in the hospital fighting for her life but we didn't even know it. I just prayed that I'm trying to convince myself that she kept those last memories of seeing her grandkids in her mind before she took her last breath. I promise I will never let her memory die. I will make sure her grandkids grow up knowing how amazing both their grandparents, grandparents was. You read from Michael's. Mommy was a caring, helpful great mother to the three of us. Anytime any one of us was sick, she would always take care of us until we were better. She spends most of her time home with her grand with her two grandchildren. If she wasn't making crafts with Kaya, she was spending time with Sophie. She lived a good life. She was able to see her youngest and only son get married and meet her grandchild. She helped my sister through her pregnancy. To her, a second grandchild. I know for sure that she is sitting next to daddy, watching over us in heaven. And uh, this is her from her daughter-in-law. I she was there as well. And Marcia was a very thoughtful person who put others' needs above her own. If she was able to do something for you, she would do it without hesitation. She was very generous with her time. She always made herself available to watch Kaya and even Anissa. Any little child who happens to be downstairs would casually be fine and be found doing crafts. Conversations with her were effortless. She was always so comforting and free of judgment that I always felt like I could tell her anything. She always had stories to share and they were always so interesting. She had a bunch of old, of odd songs, or odd sayings, sorry, that made complete sense. To her alone, like tight, <laughs> like tight like from bottom. <laughs> Up to now I have no idea what that means. But every time I ask her, she would just start to laugh. As as you can see, each of this eulogy have something in common. Only great memories. As painful as today is and moving forward with me, but is the memories that we have with her. And I know for sure we can all agree that she's smiling because she with daddy. So, thank you.
Good day everyone. Good morning. Um, this, I'd like to thank everyone for coming out here and giving us support in this time. Um, my father, he was truly, truly a unique person. He's the type of person that would help anybody. I mean anybody at all. He could, even if it means putting him in a position where he unable to survive properly or make it on his own, you know? But aside from all that, he lived a life of simplicity and happiness, you know? Um, this time of year, um, usually we always go out. Or now so he will be still calling me to go far again, or maybe even just go for a drive somewhere. But this time of year, we always, always have something to do, you know? And I, for one, I always look forward to it. If it have, if it have nothing that my, if it have anything my father taught me, is that this season, Christmas season, New Year's, is something to be spent with family. Um, it wasn't easy. Um, I remember growing up. You know, home there in your grants. Anytime I would be a little frustrated, and daddy uh, had his own, own place at that point in time, he would see me there. I would go across there, and no matter what what time of day, how he is, what mood he is, he would accommodate me and make sure that I at least eat our bed, you know, taken care of. He didn't have much, but he tried his best to, to make sure I was comfortable. Um, throughout the years, he always has a few things that he does every year, right? like clockwork. Carnival season, you will see him selling snow cones. You might see him working with a band security for carnival. You know, for Easter. If you don't see one of the kite in the sky, something wrong. Then in fact, when the sport's coming up, you go to the kitchen and school to match. You know, and, um, I would like to believe that he he left that sort of legacy when it, or he, he left that impact with those things. Um, Day, you would see him lying, you know, and I'm sure right now in heaven that he find he having a good time. Even if he by himself with a friend somewhere, you know, he making the best of it. It does it really breaks my heart to know that in his last days I couldn't be around him. You know, because just a few weeks before, I was talking to a friend of his, and he, he told me, and uh, had to treat your father better. Go and look for your father, check up on him. And I did. But little did I know that would have been the, the last time I ended up seeing him. Uh, but that day when I went across by him, we had one of those conversations we don't usually have. Um, it was our conversations about me taking responsibility in in a certain aspect of his life. Um, back then, I, I didn't really want any part of it because he did. Why does he can handle it? You know. But now it's it's all on me, and I, I feel it as if he knew this was coming. And that is why we had that conversation. But, you know, he, he did live a full life though. Um, 
I can't really say much for his younger days. I have a couple of stories that I've heard, but I've always known my father as a happy person. He wouldn't suffer. He wouldn't allow anybody to know he was suffering. You know, he, he always made the best out of every situation he was in. Um, he will be missed by everyone. Thank you. So um, now we will have the second hymn for Brother Owen speaks to us, and um, it's it's really a moving time. It's a it's a reflective time for all of us, and um, you know both our loved ones have started their journey and with that we have to continue to pray on the for the souls and um, Brother Owen Willis will, will put us there in terms of his scriptures to bring a message to us. So Bernadette, can we have a second hymn? Thank you. Yours is the king. Yours. 
to each and every one. Our sympathies to the families of Marcia and Thaddeus. I bring you greetings from Reverend Ray Hussein and the members of the New Grant Pentecostal Assemblies. Many of us who were very close to Marcia. I was also very close to Eugene and we counted a great loss to lose them at such a young age, but we take comfort in knowing this. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whomsoever believes in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. We thank God for the sacrifice that Jesus has made for us. And because of his sacrifice, we have an assurance that if we live for him, we have the promise of eternal life in the presence of our Lord and Savior. Praise the Lord. This morning, we are faced with many a challenge, many a difficulty, many are faced with heartache, pain, suffering, but I will tell you this. I considered the word vaccine for my message this morning, but I said I can't use that word. My message this morning is entitled The Greatest Antidote. The Greatest Antidote. Praise the Lord. An antidote is a medicine or other remedy for counteracting the effects of poison or disease. Two, it is something that prevents or counteracts injurious or unwanted effects. Jesus is the antidote for the world today. Jesus is the antidote, the solution for all our problems. The greatest affliction known to man is called sin. It is so deadly that it has taken the lives of billions of people over the ages. God did not create man to die, but to live in paradise. And that paradise was called Eden. 
But because of sin, man inherited death. But I remind us this morning, God has given an antidote. And the antidote is Jesus. For even before the foundation of the world, God had already foreordained that Jesus will die for us, that we can inherit life and inherit it eternally. The repercussions of this disease called sin is both temporal and eternal. Its temporal effects are deception, pain, sickness, and physical death. And its eternal effect is separation from God if we don't follow in the will and ways of God. Thanks be to God that he has prepared a great antidote to save us from the eternal repercussions of sin. This antidote is the shed blood of Jesus the Messiah, Jesus the Christ. And its application is simple. This antidote can be taken by every one of us. And I encourage us to apply this antidote to our lives. You know why? The Bible declares that all have sinned and fallen short of God's holy standard. Therefore, each one of us needs the antidote, the shed blood of Jesus the Christ. Its application is simple as I said. Peter, in his great message after the day of Pentecost, after he declared who Jesus is, the people asked him, what must we do to be saved? What must we do to please God? And Peter replied, Repent, each of you, be baptized in the name of Jesus for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Romans 10, 8 to 10 says this. But what does the word of God say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we are preaching. That if you confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart a person believes, resulting in righteousness, and with the mouth he confesses, resulting in salvation. In the days of old, men and women had to sacrifice animals to cover sin. They would sacrifice sheep and goat and bulls. But God, in his foreknowledge, knew that that was not enough. This is why he prepared the ultimate sacrifice for us. He prepared his very son. For God so loved each one of us that he willingly gave Jesus, and Jesus willingly came to die for our sins. He came to die that we might live. What a wonderful gift. What a wonderful gift. Therefore, there is no need for any other sacrifice. There is no need, for God has given Jesus for us. All we need to do is accept him as Lord and as Savior. I say Savior because he came to save us. And I say Lord because we need to obey him. Hallelujah. You may ask if God provided an antidote for sin's eternal consequences. Why not a temporal consequences? And I named one of the temporal consequences as physical death. I will point you to the mystery of the resurrection as I close. 1 Corinthians 15 verses 50 to 57 says, Now I say this, brothers and sisters, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Behold, I am telling you a mystery. We will not all sleep. We will not all sleep or die. But we will all be changed. 
in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable and we will be changed. For this perishable must put on the imperishable and this mortal must put on immortality. But when this perishable puts on the imperishable and this mortal puts on immortality, then will come about the saying that is written, Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your string? sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We are here to celebrate and recognize the lives of these two individuals. Know this, know this, that Jesus presented himself alive. When he resurrected from the dead, he presented himself alive as evidence that the promise that he gave can be ours. And we need only serve him in spirit and in truth. God is not an absentee father. God is not far away in heaven that he cannot speak, that he cannot fellowship, that he cannot communicate with us. God is very present. He is here right now. And I encourage each and every one of us it is not enough to know about Jesus. It is of utmost importance that we know him personally as the friend who sticks closer than a brother. He is the one to comfort us this morning. He is the one to carry us through. We see the day approaching, people, when things will not be so comfortable as they are now. But notice that the promises of God are sure. Notice, if we would put our trust and our confidence in him, he can carry us through as he carried Noah in the ark, as he carried the children of Israel through Egyptian captivity. God will carry us through. And I close with this. One soon day, Jesus shall descend from the heavens. The trumpet shall sound, and all eyes shall see him as he is. On that faithful day, when he sees us, when we meet with him, may he say, well done, good and faithful servants. Death is a must. If we don't die, transformation is a must. Because the scripture says we shall not all die. But we who are alive when Jesus comes shall be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. Why? Because this mortal cannot inherit eternity. We must be transformed. So we thank God that death is not the end. Death is an entrance into eternity. And we thank God the Lord for what he has done for us through his son, Jesus the Christ. Amen and amen. God bless. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Owen, from the Newman Pentecostal Assemblies. Uh, my takeaway, Brother Owen, is that uh, Christ is the antidote. And um, today, they said, from the Christian, they say that we are two or more, a guy that he is present, which is among the mess. So um, let us open our hearts, let us receive the Holy Spirit, and let us experience what you have said. Let us not know, but also experience his teaching and his love for us. So now, Mother of Marcia and uh, and um, the, the son as well would like to sing a song, right? So, Gloria.
Okay, well, good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here. Uh, this is the mother, Kathleen Pogap, of Marcia and Thaddeus. Um, one of the things that my mom loved, and Thaddeus and Marcia knows this, all of us know this, my mom loved to sing. And usually, any event that it has, she would sing. So I find it really fitting, even though I did not notify them before. It is fitting that she would sing one of her songs that you all know. So I wish that you all would join in. Let her lead as much as she knows to sing the Our Father first. Ready? Thank you. Thank you for the nice song. At this point, we'll open the floor for anyone who wants to say a few words. Um, in the interest of time, uh, we're limited to about five to ten minutes a short. You know, be brief. 
and I'm opening the floor to anyone who wants to speak. Hi, Gloria's coming. The Gloria sister. and every one of my brothers has different characteristics and personalities. You know, Tanya has a way of sometimes he will get into my skin, but yet he would make me laugh in spite of certain situations. He has a way of quoting my frustration. And for my dear sister Marcia, she was like my second mother. My first sister. She brought so much joy into my heart. You know, every time I speak with her, she always has the right words to say. So they bring punishment and to lift me up when I'm down. So she's the type of woman who speaks to you and gives you encouragement that never to give up and to press on. And I know that it's very sad to lose them both at the same time. But one day, we will meet again. And I know that they are looking at us, looking down at us and knowing that the family is still strong in spite of what we are going through. We are still sticking it all together. And they will be greatly missed by the love they give. I'm truly grateful to be standing here. So how happy. I'm truly grateful to know that they are truly my brother and sister. I'm still thankful to have my other siblings, but as I said, they each have different personalities. So Marcia. And Thaddeus, may God continue to bless you, even though that you're not here to with us. God bless you, and may your light shine in our, in our hearts and in our lives. We thank you again, and God bless you. Second sister and 
the the poor child. So I came after Marcia and the girls and I came after Talia's in all. Right? Um, what I want to say is this. They both lived a very social life and you know, the people that knew them. Very few people will be able to say they have anything bad. You will know Marcia in church and most of the elders in the church will be friends with Marcia. Likewise, Thaddeus. You will walk to Princess Town and everybody knows Thaddeus. And if they don't know him by name, like Andel previously said, they know him to fly a kite, they know him to the scouts, they know him to drive a car. One person made a comment on Facebook that no matter what time of the night, whether you had money or not, Thaddeus will take you home. Marcia loved the beak. Thaddeus loved flying kite. They loved their families. They did the best that they could to provide for them. They were there for me as a sister, and they loved their mother dearly and the father. And I would like to say, this ongoing service for both of them while it is sad for all of us, for the children of Marcia and the children of Thaddeus, for the brothers and sisters, mother, in-laws, the grand. These are what we want to follow as example. We have our own individual ways, what we want to follow them. And as we send them off today, Knowing that they were Christians, that they were followers of God, followers of Christ. We want to say thank you, Father, for their lives. Thank you for their impact. And most of all, we want to say, let us rejoice and be glad. They worry no more. They are going to God. And we should not, while we have our emotions to go through, let us rejoice and be happy. Because they are happy now. They are at peace. They are with God. Alright, so everybody, this is my peace. Let us say, Hepe Pue to Marcia and Thaddeus because they live a good life. Yeah. Well, on behalf of the Grand Pentecostal family, Marcia was very dear to us, so too was her husband, and we will especially remember her for her humility, her kindness, and with every Easter, every Christmas, she'll be part of the production, the plays, and she was instrumental in decorating the church and also making props for the youth, so she was very talented. And we pray that God will raise up someone again like her with a very great contribution to the kingdom of God. So, family and friends, God bless you. Anyone else? Good morning to each and everybody. Um, well, for those who don't know me, I'm Martin Marger. I'm the first um, child of Thaddeus Pokup. I'm not too, not too delighted to, to face him in this way this morning, but sadly so it is. And I didn't decide, I just decided I'm going to wear a black shirt this morning because I don't want to feel sad. You know, so I wear a pink. I feel like I feel like nobody plays. And for the time I know him, um, well, as you know, life not perfect. He and my mother didn't really get along too much. I love man too. So if it is a relationship, do work out. And things take a turn for the worse, however the case is. 
That doesn't change the fact that he's still my father. My mother is still my mother. Y'all are still my family at the end of the day. So I want to get our respect him fully this morning and say I'm happy that, you know, he was here. I met him a few times, we talked, we laughed. He tried to explain certain things to me, but it don't make a difference. As I say, it's still my father. You understand? You don't need to explain nothing to me. You do your part, you do your best. And I thank God for that. You know, and Sister Auntie Marcia, even though I didn't know she, from the information gathered, yeah, and you guys speak about her, I know that she was greatly cherished to you all while she lasted, and I hope that God has their souls in a better place. Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for coming. I'm the last sister. I don't really like to um, talk much, but all I got to say, the studies, one week before, you know, go on my out, I was late for work, they sit up and talk long, long, long until you get this person here. You know, he was always there in school for marching, everybody in the the man who just teach children to march. Also known, always like to do, like, well, he wasn't here this year to play the bass box. He liked his power. So, I must say, every time I watch my watch, some picture, no more ingredients again. one of the few that are close to me, that's called me. I was telling more to her, and she likes to send a goofy face and love, love. She likes to do that. When both of them, I always like to be happy. Marcy always smiling. Marcy has come negotiation for me. We talk for hours. I have work to do. I'm here studying that. We talk for hours. I took the retard and tell you for a bit of six or four hours. But the main thing with everybody, for everybody, is to keep peace and always to keep love for one another, always. You understand? Always keep that love and keep that kindness. Kindness is the most number one thing that anybody could do for one another, kindness and love. He likes helping people, he likes doing things to people. And Ma said, every time you see Master, Ma said, smiling, talking and laughing. Could be stuff, you know? May the soul rest in peace. a difficult time for all of us who knew both of them. My brother in Florida especially asked me if I am sure that Thaddeus it is the same Thaddeus who did badminton and martial arts with him. Tell me yes. Marcia actually was going to Princess Town the same week in which she died the Friday and called out to me Tuesday in her daughter car. Vernon was the driver. I'm going down the road and she waves right. She tell me she is coming back for whatever reason. They are both important people in my life. And thanks to God and their mother and father because I know both their parents also and their siblings. The Samuel family 
received Marcia into their life, the family life, not as an in-law, but as a daughter. And in my case, I was Marcia's sister also, because Junior was not just a relative to me, Junior was my brother also. I was closer to Johnny, the miserable one, who gives her enough trouble out of love. But out of the, it is important to note this, out of the 500 plus WhatsApp contact on my phone, Marcia, my few minutes always beat back nursery I can for my morning prayers and ovulation and yes, you go for peace. Because I sent those back to her also. Thaddeus came to my home a couple of times with, because of Kurt and through school also. But both have impacted all our lives in different ways. And um, Marcia's second child, Maria, is my goddaughter. Now all three would have been my godchildren because the arrangement was the second one I will stay for, but Bernadette actually was the one supposed to be the god child. But I said I would stay for the second one, but make sure it's a boy. I'm not going after. So happened, she got a girl. And I kept my word to both. Michael, God bless his soul, turned up to. And both parents have been instrumental in every aspect of their children's life as parents. Junior and Marcia were my tag team couple. Bluetooth mode connected. Finish? Yeah. That's Bernadette. <laughs> the love of my life. The one who I harass most. More than my godchild. I was asked to do the closing prayers, and uh, I think it is a privilege on behalf of both families that I am here today. Because for these past two years, I've suffered a great many losses, and this is one of the hardest. Each week, it's two or three funerals. And if people doesn't wise up to the fact that we are undergoing something that is very distressful for family, God save us all. Because the Lord is merciful. And I am thankful that both of them receive Christ in their life very early. So that said, I would like each individual to open their heart and mind to know that they are not dead. They transitioned. This is what we shed for us to go back to our maker. So I praise God today for the lives that he blessed each of us with. And God in his mercy took back two of them home. It is hard for our parents to lose children. It is hard for children to lose parents. I thank God for their lives, and I thank God in his merciful way for blessing us with two beautiful persons. Each of them had their way, and each of them in their own way are special to God. We thank God for their lives. We thank God for the mercy extended towards them and their family. And I pray that God extend his mercy towards those whose lives need his full attention. I praise God today for all he has done in each and every member of both families' life. I thank God for extending his mercy on everyone today. The extended families, those near and far, those who are looking on Marcia and Tadia's funeral today. I thank God for his great blessing, for the lives he blessed us with in knowing them, 
in personal ways. And in that, I am thanking God also. Because God in his mercy knows all and sees all. So our gratitude must extend to God first of all. So may God bless them in his merciful way. As we say today, our farewell to Marcy and Thaddeus. May God grant them the gift of his holy will. May he enfold them in his arms and receive them to his throne of grace. We thank God in every way for the opportunity of having them as our mother, as a wife, as a husband, as father, uncle, brother most of all, son and daughter. To God be the glory in what he has done. He has extended his mercy in all ways. We thank you, God, for the gift of life, for the gift of life, and for the gift, most of all, of love. Because out of love, he made us all. And out of love, he is receiving Marcy and Thaddeus back to their home, in their natural form. We thank you, God, and I ask for a special blessing on each member of both families, that God may extend his mercy towards us and give us comfort in our loss. And may he be gracious and shine his face upon each of us and extend his mercy to all families who today have lost loved ones. To God be the glory, great things he has done. For his mercy endure it forever. We thank you. Amen. thank everyone for being present. I know this is a difficult time for us, but uh, thank for everyone for being present. I also want to thank those online, loved ones, relatives, friends, for taking the time out to be online with us today. It's good your work. I also want to thank the families who contributed and assisted us in making today's pos today possible. And um, also, I also want to extend um, appreciation for the, the Amo Funeral Home for facilitating us today for this challenging time. So before we depart, um, the bodies for health reasons will not be viewing. And um, when we leave here, we are going to the New Grant Cemetery um, for, for burial. So thanks those who, who are here, thanks those who came, friends, loved ones, the New Pentecostal Assemblies, 
thank you for being supportive of us. Thank you for being supportive of Marcy and Junior, my brother. And as we leave, let us continue to keep Marcy and Thaddeus in our prayer. Let us pray for their souls. And because they have departed, and let us continue to ask God's grace to be part of us so we can experience what Jesus has for us. So I close today, and thank you for coming.
Well, let them put that one down there and then the next one there, right? This was it here, did you want to go? Smart or? Yeah, I know. 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 Yeah
that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand in the latter day upon the earth. Whom I shall see, myself and my eyes shall be whole, and not another. Job 19, 25 and 27. Thine eyes shall see the king. Condolences goes out to each and every individual here this evening as we gather here to say our our last departure to our beloved sister and brother. We know that God knows best in everything, and in everything, you know, we it's our duty for us to praise God. You know, we thank God that there's a time to come into this world, and there's a time that we have to leave. And you know that I pray that God will comfort the family. And we will continue to keep the faith and continue to trust in God. God knows best as the 
John 14 tells us, let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, in my father's house, there are many mansions. And if it was not so, he said, I would not have told you. But I would have prepared a place for me and you, that where I am, you may be also. And this evening, we bless God for everything. We bless God for the good times, the bad times, the lifestyle they will have shared with us. But today, we may fare well. So at this time, as we are about to put the body to the ground, As we say, we brought nothing into this world. I am certain that we carry anything. Put them down in the almighty name of Jesus. Let's live peace. Thank you. 
There is no city on earth for me to dwell. Oh, there is no city on earth for me to dwell. Oh, there is no city. Oh, my answer. Oh, there is no city on earth for me to dwell. Oh, there is no city on earth for me to dwell. Oh, there is no city on earth for me to dwell. Oh, there is a city. Oh, my God. Oh, there is a city. And not for me to dwell. Oh, there is a city. And not for me to dwell. Oh, there is a city. And not for me to dwell. Oh, there is a city. Oh, my God. Oh, there is a city. And not for me to dwell. Oh, there is no city and not for me to dwell. Oh, there is no city and not for me to dwell. Oh, there is no city. Oh, my God. Oh, there is no city and not for me to dwell. Oh, there is no city and not for me to dwell. Oh, there is no city and not for me to dwell. Oh, there is no city. Over yonder, I hear music in the air. Over yonder, oh, I hear. Oh, over yonder, I hear music in the air. And there must be a God. Oh, Lord, 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 over yonder. Oh, I hear music in the air. Over yonder. Oh, I hear music in the air. Oh, over oh, yonder, I hear music in the air. And the must over yonder, over yonder, I hear music in the air. Over yonder, oh, I hear music in the air. Oh, over oh, yonder, I hear music in the air. And the must. Over yonder, over yonder, Lord, I hear music in the air. Over yonder, oh, I hear music in the air. Oh, over yonder, I hear, oh, I know the mass. Oh, over yonder, over yonder, Lord, I hear music in the air. Over yonder, oh, I hear music in the air. When I reach home, when I reach home, oh, the trials will be over. When I reach, oh, Lord, Lord, when I reach home, when I reach home, oh, the trials will be over. When I reach. Oh Lord, Lord, when I meet him, oh when I meet him, oh the trials will be over. When I meet him, oh Lord, Lord, when I, oh Lord, when I meet him, Lord, Lord, the trials will be over. When I meet him, oh Lord, Lord, when I, oh Lord, when I. Oh Lord, Lord, the trials will be over when I reach. Oh Lord, Lord, when I reach home. Oh, when I reach home. Oh, the trials will be over when I reach. Oh Lord, Lord, when I reach home. Oh, when I. Oh Lord, the trials will be over when I reach. Oh Lord, when I, oh Lord, when I, oh Lord, Lord, the trials will be over when I weep. Oh Lord, Lord, when I, oh Lord, when I, oh Lord, Lord, the 
people, I want to be there. Oh, Lord, I want to be there. Oh, Lord, I want to be 